Well, hey everybody, I am so excited uh, for you guys to meet a long-term friend of mine, and for some of you guys, a new friend, uh, Bekele Shanko. Bekele and his wife Shewa have been with Crew for how many years now? Uh, 28 years. 28 years? Yeah. Um, they come from Ethiopia, but uh, they uh, served in, since 2011, um, for a lack of a better term, I'm sure there's some other fancy title, but you're the Director of Church Planting Multiplication for Crew, as well as serves the Body of Christ in a lot of ways we're going to talk about. But one of the reasons that I really wanted to make sure that uh, we got a chance for everybody to, to hear you is because of the work of God in you. I love that uh, scripture in 1 John where John says, what we felt, what we tasted, what we touched, that's what we proclaim to you. Mm -hmm. Our witness is not just what we know. A lot of people know a lot of stuff. The, our witness is really who we are. And um, and so I, I know I get the privilege of hearing your story in different contexts. So just give everybody a framework. Just retell me the story and the kind of five mm. minute version because uh, mm. I want to use that as a space to kind of for all of us to think through okay then how then shall we live in light of what God can yeah. do so yeah 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 thank you Jimmy I'm so grateful uh, to God mm. because he rescued me mm. uh, from hopelessness mm. uh, from emptiness at age five mm. um, I didn't know why I was living mm. because I came from a family where we lost 12 siblings mm. uh, in a rural Ethiopia, in a poor village. When I was born, um, we, didn't, we didn't know Christ. Mm. We, were, we were hopeless and uh, my father was uh, uh, practicing or serving a witch doctor Mm -hmm. uh, who was feared and who had power, mm -hmm. who gave people very, very complex instructions that the people had to obey. Mm -hmm. So my father was uh, similarly given so many mm -hmm. instructions, but he could not, he could not uh, like obey all of them. Mm -hmm. So whenever my father missed any of those, uh, I don't think it was intentional, but he didn't know. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, a tragedy hit our family and a child would die with no sickness at all. Uh, we were living under, under curse, under we were curse. cursed. And spiritual darkness and hopelessness and tragedy after tragedy. My father had three wives and from his three wives, we lost 12 children. Mm. Four from my mom and four from each of my dad's uh, wives, so 12 children. Mm -hmm. And when, when I was born, I'm the second one. I have an older sister and then three younger uh, siblings from uh, from my mom uh, and then one sister from uh, uh, my dad's uh, 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 another wife mm -hmm. so when I was f until I was four I was not given a name because all the children died mm -hmm. and my fa my parents also thought that I would also die but I didn't die because God had a different plan for my mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. I believe and um, I only got my name Bekele. Bekele means he's germinating, he's sprouting when I was four years old. Mm. Uh, because I was growing up unusual, um, mm -hmm. uh, like it never happened before. So I was growing up and my parents called me Bekele, he's germinating, he's growing. So <laughs> that was a prophetic name that God gave, yes. me, that God gave me. And when I was five, um, uh, the witch doctor asked my father to train me in his foot in his uh, footstep to follow mm -hmm. him and to mm -hmm. do what my father was doing and my father was training me it was at that time that god's grace and mercy mm -hmm. came on our family and god appeared to my father and sent sent him two angels who so two angels two so angels the god sends two angels to your father two okay. angels right. who Just came make sure everybody knows that yeah two angels visited my dad one mm -hmm. night and my father uh, explains to us that he was in his bed and two angels come and sat in front of him and they, they taught him about God. Mm. And after telling him about God, that God is the creator of everything, he heavens and earth, including you and the trees and the moon and the sun and everything that you see, God is the creator. After explaining that to him, um, we, don't, we don't know how that happened. It was out of body experience or uh, dream, but my father visited heaven and hell. Mm. He didn't go into the, into the inside of the hell, mm -hmm. but he, the angels stopped him at the gate of the hell 
which was dark place according to my dad people were screaming loudly and my father walked in the streets of heaven and one of the angels asked him I have shown you two places where do you want to be and my father said please send me to heaven mm-hmm. and the angel said uh, uh, I, will, I will send two men they will tell you how you can get into heaven mm. the angels did not tell him but two men who became believers a week before that day illiterate farmers from another village they came with good news to our home mm. and they shared the good news that uh, the only way my dad could enter into heaven is if he believed in Jesus Christ yes. who is the son wow. of God who died for our sins mm. on the cross who mm. paid the penalty mm. of our sins by his blood mm. so that night we became Christians. Mm. I was five years old Mm. and two days later God did another miracle in my father's life. My father had never been to school he was completely illiterate but two days after accepting Christ he was keeping cows alongside the river and he finds a a Bible sitting on the ground. Mm. It was a miracle we don't we we don't know from where that Bible had come from because we didn't have Christians in Mm. in that village so my father picked up up the book and he heard God's voice saying, this is my word. Mm. My father prayed. He said, God, if this is your word, I want to read it. And God just opened the eyes of my father and he started reading the Bible. Mm. And he came home that night and he invited the whole village to come and, uh, and, and see what was happening in my dad's life. My dad stood up, read the Bible and invited people to come to Jesus. That mm. night, the whole village came to Jesus. 400 today. people came to About Jesus. About 400 people. And yeah. today... Uh, my tribe is around 1.5 million people mm-hmm. uh, all over the country and it is estimated that about 97 percent are born again believers and there is a, a bible believing church in every village in fact in some villages we have we have mm-hmm. two or three churches so it's wow. about 97 percent are born again believers so i have seen the power yes. of the gospel yes. i have seen the grace of god i've seen the mm-hmm. love of god i have seen what the gospel of Jesus can do in Mm. someone's life. Mm. That gives me passion, Mm. that gives me motivation Mm. to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to every person who hears. Mm. Wow, so again, just, I'm sure everybody picked this up. A Couple of angels show up, show your dad heaven and hell, then two of God's servants, because like you always say, um, God, Mm always uses us he partners with us to preach the gospel yeah you guys come to the lord the village comes to the lord your dad can't read the bible now he reads and then that's your upbringing so yeah. you're living in a move of god yeah. as a child so just a little little more tell us about uh, bec- but also what's happening is the communists are on the rise in your country while you're a part of this move of god and i remember you telling me about the university days in your early days Uh, in the challenges to your own faith. Mm -hmm. How did you guys deal with (laughs) communism, which is a religion in and of itself, in the midst of the gospel? Yeah, yeah, thank you, Jimmy. One of the things that uh, uh, I I want to mention about my dad uh, was my dad became evangelist, and for almost uh, 40 years, uh, to be specific, about 37 years, he preached the gospel. Mm -hmm. He carried that Bible always with him. Wherever he went, he carried the Bible with him. Wow. And it was an old Bible. Mm. And as my father was walking through the villages, um, demon possessed people would just scream, saying, Holy Fire is passing by. Mm. That means my father wow. was around that area, and people would come looking for my dad. Mm. He would go to that home and he would uh, tell the demon possessed person, You are evil spirits. What are you doing in this home? This mm. person is created in God's own mm. image. Come out. And then mm. he would put that Bible on the head of this demon-possessed mm. person. The demon would just scream and leave. Yes. And the whole family come to Jesus. So God used my dad in a, in a powerful way. And his entire life, the only book my dad could read was the Bible. Mm. If you give him any other book with the same script, he can't show you a single word. Mm. It's just a miracle every day. And I asked I ask my father, uh, my father, the scripts are the same Amharic letters in Ethiopia, mm. in uh, the Holy Bible, and in, in this book. Wow. If you can read this book, why can't you read this book? Sure. And he says, mm. no, I can't read this book. I, I can't mm. see anything. It's dark. But when I open this one, the Holy Bible, mm. it's like somebody is carrying this uh, bright torch over my head. That's amazing. And I could see everything. It's light. It's bright light. Mm. So my dad read the Bible so clearly, so powerfully. Uh, so perfectly, mm. but he could not 
show you a single letter in any other book. So for me, growing up every day is a miracle. Mm. Every day God is a living God. Every mm. day God is mm. performing a miracle. Uh, that is the context I grew up in. When I was uh, six years old in 1974, uh, Ethiopia became a communist country. And uh, as soon as we, we became a communist country, the communists shut down every church almost every church there were few churches open here and there mm -hmm. but most of the churches were shut down right and uh, and following Christ became illegal owning the Bible became illegal you could not share your faith with others mm -hmm. you could not pray mm -hmm. so on university campus uh, we were 88 students who were blacklisted All right 88 students everybody knew who because we were. you were believers we were believers yeah, yeah. we were blacklisted mm -hmm. uh, but during that time what helped us was uh, the life of prayer. We prayed overnights. Mm. There was the power of the Holy Spirit working mm. in us and through us, and we were so bold uh, to, mm. to, to share Christ with other people. We were not afraid. Right. And uh, we were persecuted. Many, many Christians were persecuted. Many were in, in jail for years. Uh, many were beaten up. Many were killed. Mm. It was a very tough time. But mm. during that time, the church went underground. And one of the strategies, some of the strategies of the underground church was uh, to focus on evangelistic Bible studies, right. where, uh, where leaders uh, produced evangelistic Bible studies and trained leaders, small group leaders underground. So those leaders, they uh, challenged members to invite their friends, family members, neighbors who didn't know Jesus. And also there was a huge hopelessness because there was war and civil war and, and, and so on. And many people were being killed. There was hopelessness. So through this small group evangelistic Bible studies and training leaders and overnight prayers and God performing miracles in 17 years when uh, Ethiopia was under communism 17 years from 1974 to 1991 the number of evangelical believers grew from, grew from less than 200,000 to over 8 million over 8 million over 200,000 to 8 million in 17 yeah. years in the midst of communism in midst of persecution persecution yeah. right. in fact was good right it was painful mm. but it was good it was good because there was no like a um, look no lukewarm Chris, Chris, Christianity sure. if you are a Christian you are a Christian yeah. you are ready to die for Jesus mm. you are ready to die for the truth mm. so we were so completely sold out mm -hmm. to Jesus we were sharing Christ, mm -hmm. no fear. Mm -hmm. We were ready to die. Mm -hmm. And we would even say, um, they, they, they harassed us. They said, if you don't deny Jesus, we would kill you. Yeah. And we said, uh, if you kill us, you just send us to heaven, mm -hmm. shortcut. <laughs> but you know, you know why? Uh, we don't want to go by, by ourselves. Yes. Jesus also died for you. It was a setup yeah. to share. The yeah, just, just believe in Jesus and uh, we can go together to heaven. You know, Jesus didn't die just for me. He mm. also died for you. So we were bold wow. to share Christ uh, in that uh, difficult circumstances. So we, we, we got the context, this incredible story of growing up and then seeing the impact of the gospel as a young man. And then, of course, um, you guys join crew. You have these incredible big things that they can read in your book. <laughs> that just came out, which we'll make sure that everybody gets a hold of here at the end. Um, but kind of fast forward us to, to now, Yeah. all right? Um, you've carried world evangelization in your heart because of your own experience and your own theological belief and then your own partnership around the world. So just kind of bring us into what do you see God doing now? What do you think the need of the hour is now? How do we, how do we embrace our hour uh, in the Lord. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, thank you. So, after I graduated from college in Ethiopia, uh, I worked for five years for Ethiopian government. And then after that, God called me. So my wife and I, soon uh, we were married and we joined uh, Campus Crusade for Christ in Ethiopia, which is called Great Commission Ministry. Uh, and my first appointment was to lead the national ministry I led for five years. Then I was appointed to lead uh, 23 countries of the same organization, Campus Crusade, in Southern and Eastern Africa region, which I led for about 10-11 uh, years. Mm -hmm. Then in 2010, I was, I was given a, a global responsibility. I was uh, uh, brought uh, to Orlando, uh, so I'm part of uh, Campus Crusade's global leadership. Right. I serve as a vice president, and I was asked to st help start church planting for our organization, mm -hmm. uh, which we did in 2010. 
And the Lord gave us a vision because God loves every person. <laughs> Every person, yeah. every person is created in God's own image. Mm. He loves His image mm. in you. He loves mm. His image in me, mm. in every person. You know, people are not numbers. Right. They are uniquely designed, right. precious, loved mm. individuals. Regardless of where they live, mm. where they come from, right. who they are, God loves them. Mm. That's why the Bible says, for God so loved the world, the world means every person, every tribe, every tongue, every people that he gave his son Jesus mm -hmm. uh, to die on the cross so that mm -hmm. anyone and mm -hmm. everyone who believes in Jesus will have eternal life, yes. that they will not perish. God doesn't want anyone to perish. Yeah. So in 2010, as I was helping to start this uh, new division for our organization to focus on church planting, God, uh, God showed me the world, mm -hmm. the world. At that time, it was about 7 billion people. Mm -hmm. Every person needs to know the love of God. Mm -hmm. They need to mm -hmm. taste what I have tasted. They need mm -hmm. to see yes. the life-changing mm -hmm. power of the gospel mm -hmm. of Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, that is my passion. So how can we, how, what would it look like uh, for us to share the good news with every person yeah. in the world? And in 2010, uh, we, God gave us this, uh, this vision to see a church, a healthy church, a church that is right. loving Jesus, yes. obeying Jesus, fulfilling mm -hmm. the mission of Jesus, mm -hmm. planted among every 1,000 people all over the world mm -hmm. so that people will be able to taste and touch and experience God and His grace and His love. Yes. So the church in a walking distance, very right. accessible, every village, every neighborhood, every mm -hmm. high-rise apartment, right. even using our online connections, digital connections, sure. you can have people who are coming right. together to study the Word of God, to, to discover God, mm -hmm. and discover God's love, and experience His forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So a church for every 1,000 people, so that uh, means uh, we want to see additional five million churches planted mm -hmm. around the world mm -hmm. and the churches that are serving their communities mm -hmm. loving their communities mm -hmm. and 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 showing who God is and caring for people mm -hmm. uh, we we want we want churches everywhere so I've been involved in doing that in leading that and it's not just our organization right. it's the whole body of Christ yeah because uh, Jesus prayed for us to be one, mm -hmm. as He and His Father are one. If we are one, and if we work together, if we love one another, if we respect and appreciate one another, if we all know that there is only one church. Yes. You know, right now we have so many denominations, yes, so many uh, yeah. identities, and so sure. many expressions, but ultimately there is one church. Mm. There is one bride, mm. which is the bride of Jesus. Yes. There is one church in heaven, in eternity, mm -hmm. there is going to be just one church. Mm -hmm. So for all of us to understand that, that we, we are one church and we serve one king mm -hmm. and we work together, we love and respect one mm -hmm. another and we share resources with one another. Mm -hmm. What is working for me? If I have sure. resources, come and take it. Use it for the sure. glory of God. Yeah. If we all maintain such attitude and work together, collaborate intentionally mm -hmm. and strategically, God can use that partnership to build your, His kingdom. So many organizations, right. many churches yes. have come together to work together mm -hmm. uh, to see a church planted among every 1,000 people in every village and every neighborhood. That is what is happening and I'm very excited about this. Mm -hmm. And another new thing that, uh, uh, that I've been sharing recently is to celebrate the birthday of the church. Yeah, this the, is a great vision. I want to, want to, it got him going. So I, <laughs> I just want to, let's say, okay, so um, we not only, we've got this clarity point that God wants every tribe, tongue, people, nation, every individual yeah. to hear the gospel. We believe church, the church, the gathered people of God for the glory of God is God's way to express that. Yeah. We're, I'm just repeating what I hear yeah. you saying. Yeah. So uh, one, at least, um, life-giving, multiplying, obedient, church-based community within every thousand people on the planet. That's what you're yeah. advocating, encouraging. Yeah. We've got so many collaborations going on around that. And um, and so now you're adding some strategy to it. So tell us about the Pentecost Sunday. I just heard about it today. <laughs> yeah. So I'm in. I just want you to know, hey, everybody, <laughs> I'm in with this. So share, share just what God's put, put on your heart. Yeah, it's a few months ago that uh, I was thinking about uh, 
uh, the church's birthday. Uh, you know, I celebrate my birthday. Yeah. Everybody, every Everybody. person. Uh, we, we join you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we celebrate our birthdays. But the church, Jesus came to build his church. He said, yes. I will build my church. And it's a victorious church. It's mm -hmm. one church. He is the master and the church is his bride. It's one church. He, right. he came to build his church because he knew that church planting is, uh, is, a, is a lasting strategy until yes. he comes back. Absolutely. That is how God's love is uh, shared among, uh, among uh, the nations of the world right. by, by planting the church that represents the kingdom of God. Uh, so uh, since 2010, by the way, uh, the Lord led us to start the Global Alliance for right. Church Multiplication, GACX. So right now we have over 110 uh, global ministries working together, mm -hmm. uh, learning from each other, loving one another, yep. sharing resources generously and intentionally collaborating. Antioch is part, of, part of that. that. Antioch yep, is in. part of that and yep. global church movements of crew that I lead is part of that. We share resources ge generously. Yes. We, uh, we learn from each other. We go and collaborate in different places. So recently, um, I was asking about myself, about uh, why can't we celebrate uh, the birthday of the church? The church was born in the book of Acts chapter 2, mm -hmm. uh, what, what we call the day of Pentecost. That is right. uh, the, 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 uh, the day that the Holy Spirit came right. to birth the, the church. Mm -hmm. um, so this uh, next year, uh, the day of Pentecost or the church's birthday uh, is on June 5th. Okay. June 5th is right. 50 days after Jesus' right. resurrection. Mm -hmm. So between resurrection and, uh, and, and Pentecost, there are 50 days. Yep. Uh, during those 50 days, what we learn in the book of Acts, the first 40 days, Jesus proved himself that he was right. alive. Yep. Uh, and then the, the remaining 10 days, he said that wait for the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, you can't uh, proclaim Christ. Yes. Wait for the Holy Spirit, for the power to come. Yep. When you receive the power, when, you, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive power and mm -hmm. then you will be my witnesses, not your own witnesses, yes. my witnesses. Yes. Yes. Uh, from Jerusalem to Judea, Samaria, mm -hmm. to the ends of the world. You can mm -hmm. go by this power. So 50 days, mm -hmm. 40 days proving Jesus' resurrection, right. 10 days waiting, praying and waiting for the Holy Spirit. Yep. Now we have both. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have Jesus who is alive, who is resurrected. His tomb mm -hmm. is empty. We also have the Holy Spirit. Yes. So both requirements have been fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Now it's our chance. Now it's mm -hmm. our time to celebrate the birth of the church mm -hmm. on um, on, the, on, on the day of Pentecost, after 50 days from uh, resurrection, how we can do that is for every church in the world to plant at least one church mm. on that day. Right. So let's use those 50 days from, starting from Easter yes. to prepare. Okay. We can pray, yep. we can train church planters, identify mm. and train church mm. planters, identify church planting locations, yep. prepare and start training during those 50 days, start yes. praying. Uh, and then build relationships with co with people in the communities, mm -hmm. share the love of God, pray mm -hmm. for them, and then on the day of Pentecost, launch a new church. Mm. Every church can plant a church. Mm. And some churches can plant multiple All churches, churches on that day. Right. Yes. So we have, Jimmy, we have, we have maybe about six to seven million churches right now in the world. Nobody knows exactly mm. how many, right. yep. maybe between six and seven million. Right. It's, say we have six, six million churches in the world. If each church, right. no, even if 10% of sure. those churches planted at least one, mm -hmm. we are looking at 600,000 churches on a single day. Mm. It can happen. Absolutely. It can happen. So I've been encouraging ch churches uh, to take this seriously. And yeah. if Jesus did that in Acts chapter 2, mm. we can repeat Acts chapter 2 today. Mm. Now in our, in our time, in our generation, mm. every year we can celebrate. We can plant new churches every year mm -hmm. on the church's birthday. Mm -hmm. So the, I have been sharing that and organizations when they hear, they're excited about, super excited about this. Mm -hmm. uh, and we want this to be on the church calendar everywhere right. and for us to work together and we can support others sure. also. One church can support another church. Right. A mega Partner church, together. big church, sure. denominations. They can support the smaller churches. Mm -hmm. Let's all do work together. We are stronger together. We mm. are better together. Let's mm. support one another and see the vision of our Lord Jesus Christ fulfilled. Mm. Because Jesus said this gospel will be preached in the whole world. Mm. How? Right. Through you, through me, yeah. through our unity, through mm. our partnership, mm -hmm. through the body of Christ. Wow. Well, if you're looking for a small vision today, you didn't hit the right podcast. But the big vision of encountering Jesus 
in his glory and uh, in a tangible way. These encounters with God lead to moves of God that then lead to the visions of God. And so we've been talking about uh, this vision for the body of Christ. And, and I can, I'll just say for me, the things that I uh, that we're a part of is GACX would be one of those ways. You can just go online mm. to GACX.com, I guess. Dot I-O. Dot I-O, yeah. right? And then finishing the task is another deal that we all collaborate on. Uh, we have a deal called Golden Shores, which is kind of a microcosm of that in Myanmar. Uh, but I, I, I want to make sure that people get a hold of your book as well. It's called Never Alone, correct? Never Alone, Never Alone. from Ethiopian Villager to Global Leader. Right, Ethiopian Villager to Global Leader. And um, so Never Alone, and uh, it's just coming out next week on Amazon? Yes, yeah, it will be released next week. Yeah, so, uh, so Amazon, you can go yeah. to Amazon, you can find it, you can pre-order it now, I'm yeah. sure. And you can, it can have it. But I want to just maybe take the last couple minutes here before we wrap up and just... I personally say thank you. Thank you for um, loving us. Laura and I have personally been loved and cared for by you and Shewa. Um, and you know, one of my prayers has been, and I, and I would encourage everybody to start praying this way. Um, I would have been saying, uh, Lord, who are your friends? Mm -hmm. That's who I want to be friends with. Mm -hmm. I want to, and and you know, you, you, and that doesn't mean that if you're not friends with somebody that God's using that they're not or or are a friend of God. But just all of us have. Uh, people that we're called to walk with that uh, God's uh, put his hand on if we just simply ask the question God who are your friends let me connect with your friends because Jesus works with friends yeah. to produce ministry that lasts for a lifetime and I find that happening all over the body of Christ and so if you're listening to this podcast I would say ask God God who are your friends in my city let me collaborate with them pray seek God together believe God for a move of the Holy Spirit God who are your friends in our nation who are your friends in the nations and or maybe more specifically who am I called to walk with and partner with because God's not going to let any one organization do it he's yeah. not going to let any superhero person do it this is um, this last days, this move of the Holy Spirit unto world evangelization is going to be we. Yeah. Uh, it's about uh, yeah. Jesus, His glory, and His people, and we get to be His servants together. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jimmy. I yeah. really value uh, your friendship. You are a true friend. Mm -hmm. I praise God for the day mm -hmm. that He brought us together. Yes. Uh, in, in, in a conference. Yes. Um, and uh, the last, what, seven, eight, the yeah. years that we have uh, become true friends yes. I get inspired by your mm -hmm. life by, the, by what God is doing through Antioch movement um, I praise God yes I agree with you uh, this is time for partnerships yes that's yeah. why uh, I even wrote that book ne yeah. never alone is right. about partnership right if you cut my skin it bleeds partnership. Yes, that's true. Because, right? because the fruit in, of your life is yeah, because building in, coalitions. In, in that book, yeah. in that book, from throughout the book, mm. I speak about partnership. Mm. I share principles of partnerships, mm. the power of partnerships, mm. practices mm. of partnerships. Mm. I started partnership even before I was born. Mm. I'm a, in that book. I say I'm the product of partnership. <laughs> it's because my dad and my everybody's mom, a product. Yes. Yeah, but my dad and mom partner yes. through their partnership. I was born. Yes, I love it. And then when when I was saved, mm. uh, so that's the first chapter. When I was saved, it's partnership, yeah. heaven and earth. Mm. People who funded Bible translation because my father found a Bible. Mm. People who funded the Bible translation. The printing, mm. the shipment, yeah. the distribution. Oh, everybody's a partner. Thing to angels. Mm. Two men coming to share the good news with our wow. family. How many people have partnered just to save me? Mm. So many people. So you can't live even your life without partnership. So I bleed mm -hmm. partnership when you cut my skin. So mm -hmm. my book is all about partnership, never alone. Mm -hmm. And then I share that from the perspective of my own life journey. Yes, right. That's why from Ethiopian villager to global leader, the yeah. subtitle is, yeah. it's my journey, but yeah. from the lenses the of partnership. Yeah. So this is a time of partnership. No one in the body of Christ can say, no, I don't need you. Right. I, I have everything I need. I have all the strategies, all the tools, all the people I need. So no one can say that. Yes. Right. God in his mercy, grace, and wisdom, mm. he hasn't given you everything. 
Absolutely. He hasn't yes. given me everything. Absolutely. I need you, you need me. Yeah. Your strength is my weakness. My yes. weakness is your strength. Yes. We complement. Mm. And God wants all of us to focus on Jesus and on the kingdom. Mm. People who understand the kingdom of God, they are ready and willing to yes. give everything. Absolutely. So partnership starts by giving what you have, mm. by right. blessing others. Yes. Let's do that and let's glorify God mm. and help advance his kingdom mm. and proclaim his love. He loves every mm. person with passion. He mm. wants the church to be planted everywhere so that the light of God is shining mm. everywhere among the people. Mm. Let me pray. Spirit of the living God, I just agree with Michaela. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we are asking together out of our friendship and partnership and the multiple friends who are listening to this podcast, God, would you plant seeds again to believe, believe for the glory of God, believe for the power of God, believe for the Amen. church of Jesus Christ to be multiplied out for the sake of the lost and the dying and the broken, for the sake of everyone hearing and everyone knowing we pray lord take the seeds of this book the seeds of this podcast and the seeds of our life and lord would you truly um, glorify yourself in our lives in the name of jesus we pray amen 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 we love you guys thanks for listening today